Welcome to this Living a Changed Life series. We're in session two, which talks about breathing that equates to prayer. Last week, we talked about being born again and settling the fact that we can know that we have our salvation in Christ. When a child is born naturally, the first thing that happens is they start to breathe on their own. And today in this lesson, we want to look at that, what it means to really begin to pray. There's really two aspects uh, regarding prayer, and that is the talking part and the listening part. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you naturally a talker or are you naturally a listener? Sometimes we don't take time to evaluate ourselves, or maybe other people would say that about ourselves, but normally we are. Sometimes we equate that with an extrovert or an introvert. Extroverts are talkers, introverts are listeners. Well, I'm not really saying which one is better. I'm just saying that we naturally are prone to talk more or to listen more. But when we get into the aspect of prayer, we really need to do both. Now, our, in our spiritual development, as we uh, learn how to pray, one of the things that we will uh, look at is to be able to realize that as we, as we talk to God, there's certain things that, um, that we will learn as we study his word and as we hear other people pray about how to pray and the talking aspect. And I go through in the book different aspects about the talking part of prayer. Then I also jump into the listening part of prayer that you can read and go over and to uh, make some notes for yourself so that you can both talk and listen. Now, as you begin to pray, uh, one of the things that um, happened to the disciples, they actually came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. Now, oftentimes Jesus brought the agenda to his disciples, say, I want you to learn this and hear this and practice this. But Prayer was one of those things that the disciples actually brought the agenda to Jesus. They said, teach us to pray. Now, I asked myself, why would they do that? Perhaps they listened to Jesus pray. They uh, heard the words that he said. But then it wasn't just that he prayed, but what happened after he prayed. I mean, he came out and people, he, people actually listened to his teaching they leaned into it. Uh, there were terminal diseases that were healed. There were demonic forces that were cast out of people. I mean, amazing, thing happened. amazing things happened because he prayed. I think that was the motivation behind the disciples coming to Jesus and saying, teach us how to pray. And so again, as we're born again, one of the first things that we wanna do is not just breathe, but pray. And as we look at this in this chapter, we see the aspects of, of, uh, of prayer that uh, I get into. And, uh, and uh, as, as, you, as you dive in and begin to pray yourself as well as in a group, you'll begin to kind of be at ease about, uh, about praying out loud and uh, also just listening to God. Really, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 sum up exactly this whole talk, talking part and listening part of prayer. Let me read it to you. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's really the talking part. And then verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's really the listening part. As we present our prayers and petitions to Christ, then all of a sudden we're flooded with his peace and direction in life as we hear what he has to say. Now, in listening to God, uh, we are uh, oftentimes the way that he speaks to us primarily is through our thoughts. We actually begin to think God thoughts. Now, other ways that God can speak to us is through a dream that we would have or a vision that we might see or even signs that would take place that uh, would happen because um, you know we're in a situation and God shows us a sign that he's actually listening to us and and that could happen what we need to do is to really tune our spiritual ears to hear the voice of God to hear what he has to say now there's really three other voices that we can hear beside God besides God's voice we can hear our own voice in other words what we desire to do which may be what God wants we can also hear the voice of others. 
And that is, what do others want us to do? Not what we want, but what do others are imposing on us? And then we can um, actually hear the voice of the devil or demonic oppression coming at us. And so it's important to sort out those three voices and, and sometimes they can, they can uh, begin to be the only voice that we hear and we want to make sure that we sort out those other three so that we hear God's voice. And that's a process that we grow in over time. So the question is, how do we sort out which voice that we're listening to? And one of the things that, uh, that I've done in my life is, first of all, I read God's word on the topic or the subject matter that I'm praying about. What does God say about what I'm concerned about? And dig into scriptures and find that out. Second is to get godly counsel. I think that's so important of other people that have walked through maybe, maybe similar things that you're walking through or other situations they've overcome. You go get their counsel. And then a, a third way is to really sense where God's peace is. Know when his peace is there and when his peace is not there, then you might need to wait and uh, continue praying or ask God for direction. Wanda and I were at a place uh, where we needed to make a major decision and basically it was to stay in school for me another year or to come home early and jump back into ministry. And uh, wow, it was a tough decision. We prayed about it together. We, um, we fasted for a week about what to do. We got counsel from those that, uh, that we thought we needed to get counsel from, and that was a little bit confusing. And uh, we were just kind of exhausted about this major decision. What was God saying, stay or go? Finally, we called a friend that we, we trusted and, and again asked for his counsel, and he simply said this. He said, Bobby and Wanda, follow your heart. What is your heart saying in this? Well, we knew immediately what it was. It was stay, not go. And that was confirmed in that year that we stayed and, and I completed my degree. It was one of the best years of our lives. And so you have to realize that sometimes you walk through a process and, and in the end, it, it may not be God's word. It may not be plain in God's word. It may not be clear with the counsel, but then you just have to come to that place of peace and then walk it out, and God will, God will guide you in that. In, um, in praying, really what we're looking for is God's will. What is God's will in a matter? And I outlined in the chapter three different aspects of God's will, and this might be something new for you, perhaps not the first one, but maybe the other two. The first one is the commanded will of God. In other words, it's pretty clear in Scripture when God says, don't do this and make sure you do this. He says, if you love me, do what I say. I mean, that's pretty clear, like the Ten Commandments. It tells us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. That's the commanded will of God. Then beyond that, we have another aspect of God's will, and that is the permitted will of God. What is that? It means that he permits us to do things that aren't necessarily his choice or what he would have us do. For instance, after the Israelites entered the Promised Land, they looked around and all the other nations had a king and they said, we don't have a king. Well, that was really a slap in God's face because he wanted to be their king. But they said, we want a king. And so God permitted them to have a king. He told them the consequences of having a good king versus a bad, bad king. They agreed they would accept the consequences and there were. But this is a, an illustration of the permitted will of God. Another example would be that uh, God designed a man and a woman to get married and live together for life. But in Moses' day, it says that Moses permitted couples to get a divorce. That wasn't God's commanded will. That wasn't his, but, but God permitted that to happen because that's what the people wanted. Again, we can have that happen in our life. We such desire something that is like God says, okay, I'll give it to you, but there might be some baggage that you'll have to deal with along the way. We just have to accept that. The third aspect is the revealed will of God. Now, this happens when we walk through situations that we're asking God to guide us along the way. In other words, we don't really know how things are going to turn out. He's not told us ahead of time, but we have the faith that he'll walk through with us and make it through to victory. An example that I would give in the Old Testament, uh, Abraham, God asked him to take his only son and go to a mountain and sacrifice him. 
Now this is way outside of the box of what God would normally say, uh, but yet he heard God's voice and he was willing to obey the Lord. He took his son up to the mountain and right before he raised the knife to kill his one and only son, God said, stop. He said, now I know there is nothing in between you and I. That was, a, that was a challenging time for Abraham, but he heard God's voice and was willing to walk through to make sure that he was, uh, having, he, he was finding the will of God as he went through. And then after that uh, encounter took place of stopping, it says that Abraham looked over and he saw a ram that was caught. His horns were caught in the thickets. And he said, now here's the sacrifice that God provided. And he went over and took that ram and sacrificed it to God as a way of, of just uh, giving thanks that he had been able to hear God's voice and walk through this dicey situation and come out the other side victorious and knowing that he'd heard the will of God. So those are three uh, aspects of the will of God. We have the commanded will of God, we have the permitted will of God, and then we have the revealed will of God. Now, you might uh, share in your group or share with uh, your mentor about how maybe you've experienced all those different levels and, and how maybe it did work or it didn't work for you. Now, I want to just kind of finish up here with um, how uh, different aspects of, of, uh, of the will of God and, and uh, how uh, I walk through practical tips of, uh, of how to get started in prayer and things to, to pay attention. You can see that in the chapter and, and kind of go through that, uh, whether in a group or with your mentor. But uh, the application part of this uh, chapter is to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was clear that uh, if we are to minister effectively in this world to represent him, that we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is needed and necessary. He was very clear in that. And, and if you haven't read that, he made that clear in John 14, 15, and 16 in the Gospel of John. And so after you've read about uh, what the baptism of the Spirit means and what it is, there's a prayer for you to pray. And uh, those in the group or your mentor can join you in that. I want to just have uh, a few discussion questions that uh, you can uh, walk down through. Again, you may not get to all these questions. Maybe one or two of those uh, of these uh, would, uh, would spark a, a discussion for you. The first one is to share an answered prayer. As simple as that. You know, maybe you've already prayed and God answered. And I know I'm always encouraged when someone tells me an answered prayer. So maybe one or two of you or more have an answered prayer that you'd like to share. The second question is, are you comfortable praying out loud? Why or why not? That's a great question to ask. Are you comfortable praying out loud? I know for me, I was uh, more comfortable praying out loud when I prayed out loud. And uh, whether I was by myself or with others, I just got more comfortable when I started praying out loud rather than just in my thoughts. The third question is, do you consider prayer essential? To your growth or is it just you know an extra for you? How important do you consider prayer in your walk or your growth with the Lord? Why or why not? And then the final question is, do you find yourself believing when you pray that God hears you or do you find yourself doubting? Do you find when you're praying, believing God's really hearing me or do you oftentimes question that God is not hearing you. Why or why not? These are great questions to ask about prayer. And so take some time either in the group or the mentor and go through these questions and uh, really encourage you to take some time and pray for one another and encourage one another as you journey through this second session on, on breathing. And that is knowing the will of God.